before we get into today's episode, it is almost the end of the year, it's almost tax season, and Nick and I are so excited to announce a new sponsor of the How to Film Weddings podcast. That is Core Financial. Uh, John has used them for a couple years for doing his books and his taxes and his financial planning. I was talking to him about this time last year and he recommended Core to me and I have been using them for all of 2019. Guys, girls, people listening, what is probably the the most stressful thing that you have to deal with regularly in your business, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's books, taxes, and accounting, all of that. Would you agree, John? A hundred percent. And having the team, Jeremy and the team over at Core, you know, as basically another member of my team, an extension of my team, I've been able to focus on what really matters and that's running my business and taking care of clients. So we are just so pumped to have an option for you out there. They're nationwide. And so if you're interested, you know, definitely check them out. We're going to have episodes with them on soon, but we just wanted to jump on here before the episode to tell you how excited we are and stay tuned for more from Core Financial. And if you would like more information, information about core and what they can do for you head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash core and you can find out all of the information about them doing bookkeeping about them doing your taxes about them giving you a financial plan so that you should know if you should spend any, spend money in your business or not in the following months it's a great investment yes it, it costs some money but it's going to save you so much money in the long run by hiring a company like this we are so excited to have core on board as well one of our sponsors. People, they are concentrating a lot about the camera and to bring at home cool stuff. That is the main goal. They want to bring cool shot, mm -hmm. cool things, but they forget completely the empathy that they have that they could build between them and the people what they are shooting. Hello and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn and today is a great day. I'm joined by the one and only Nick Deep Nuggets Miller. Nick, how are you today, my friend? Dude, I am really, really good. I am, I am on like, I'm still buzzing on cloud nine, whatever you want to talk it, from our conversation we had with Ricardo Fasoli. We have amazing. arrived, man. We, okay, this guy, I, for our United States listeners, you know, some of you may not know this guy, but Ricardo is one of the biggest worldwide wedding filmmakers. His brand, you know, the creative wedding company that he has, he is killing it in Europe and it's really like we wanted to have a big dog on for our first European guest and this I don't know if it gets much bigger than this so Ricardo Fasoli on the episode today we talk about finding your voice and the way that he first of all his voice is really good because he has an Italian accent because he's Italian it is really good so I kind of got lost a couple times while we were talking to him just being like oh I just love what you're saying I don't even <laughs> care what it is because it's just so good so uh, no, but finding your voice and like just how you can go from emulating people to then being able to pour your heart into yeah. your films and like the way that he explained it. I don't know if it was the accent. I don't know what it was, but like it touched me. It changed like there's some it definitely gave me the warm feelies. It was awesome. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to check out this episode and just listen to what he has to say about finding your voice and being a creative and, and all of that. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into the episode. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. We have the one and the only Ricardo Fasoli on our podcast today. Ricardo, take a second for the five people maybe out there that don't know who you are. Introduce oh, yourself and kind of... Tell us where you're located, just a little bit about you and how you got going in your business. Oh, thank you for the introduction, but uh, I don't know if so many people know me, uh, but uh, I am Ricardo Fazzoli with the A. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm Italian. I live in Germany with my wife. I'm shooting wedding uh, uh, since 2013. And uh, yeah, that, 
That's it. I'm sorry, guys, for my English. It is what it is. I, I do my best. Oh, we though. love That's it. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had that accent. I would be so much cooler. Well, <laughs> but but you know, your your English is way better than my Italian. So <laughs> yes. you you win. You win. Yes. So, so you've been doing this since 2013. Um, you know, we're going to talk a lot today about just your style, finding your own voice. You have a really awesome style to your films and we'll link your videos of course in the show notes but how would you describe your style when approaching like wedding films in general uh well again thank you uh i i, I can't describe really a style uh the things what what i'm trying to to achieve when i'm i'm doing a, a wedding film is that it looks uh like a film so not like a music video or um, i don't know like a, um, too much documentary it's, it's it should look like a, like a film so i this is i i would describe like a cinematic style but it's abused at things i think um Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'm a I'm a fan of horror films, so there's also a little bit of that in in my films. Uh, uh, like I don't know some kind of transition or sound effects, sound design, uh, these things. Um, but I can't really describe the style. It's melancholic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, there is definitely like a melancholy, you know, like a darker and I, you know, seeing that you like horror films and like, obviously your films aren't scary by any means, but like there is like this dark beauty to the way that you put your films together. Um, and so is this always how you shot or how did you get into like, how did you decide wedding films? How did that get going? You know, was your first wedding film? Did you f- shoot it the same way you do now? And what was the story of how you got going in wedding films? Yeah, when when we began, uh, the, there was not so much uh, out there about uh, uh, inspiration. Uh, uh, we began with following uh, what we liked, and uh, we tried uh, to recreate that kind of feelings that uh, we liked uh, when we were watching a wedding, when we were there and watching uh, a wedding, and. Time to time, uh, we try to learn a little bit uh, how to shoot better, how to uh, improve the grading, the sound design, and all this stuff. Uh, um, but we are quite uh, sensible, uh, me and my wife, uh, and uh, we like to emphasize the, the the moment where we felt something on on the wedding. That is uh, that is what we we. We done at the beginning, and it's still what we are doing in now. Mm. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's great. A question that I that it's been floating around in my head: um, Do you are you traveling? First off, are you traveling a lot? You know, for your weddings, or are you? I mean, are you in mostly Europe? Or are you kind of going all over the world? Yeah, we are doing uh, all around the world. We we do wedding everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, um, you know, I have heard, you know, from in, in, you know, like, uh, people that, that have commented, you know, in like the UK, you know, they've said, oh man, if, if only, you know, we could do weddings like Americans do weddings, you know, so I'm sure you see, you know, being different cultures and stuff. So how, um, how how is it different maybe where the stuff that you're then maybe some of the stuff that some of our american listeners are are used to you know going and, and seeing how how is it different maybe in europe than it is um here? the things that uh, oh wow the wedding in europe they are cooler or something like this is the things that uh, i think that uh, the the grass uh, of the garden of the neighbor it's every time uh, better but it isn't like this so there's beauty in in every kind of uh, of culture and uh, way to celebrate the wedding it's only that when you are used to see every time the same stuff uh, uh, you are get bored and you are more curious uh, and you know the curiosity it's uh, it's a uh, um, it's a it makes a big part on uh, on filming uh, a wedding um what what to doing uh, so much uh weddings around the world at the end uh 
they are also in the same how also really similar it's uh, it's a uh, two couple but mm -hmm. they are getting married they are changing some small things uh, like uh, a way how they go on the uh, on the they are walking the aisle or how is the ceremony or or how is the party but at the end uh, it's that it's uh, two couples that they are promised to each other uh, love I don't know if I answered yeah. to the question. Um, that's good. Yeah, I think. No, no. Yeah, that, hmm. that's great. I was just, I mean, you, you know, you have, you have an experience, you know, with traveling all over the place and, you know, doing all this, these weddings, you know, in incredible locations hmm. and stuff. But um, I just, I just didn't know, um, you know, if, 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 if they were really were didn't, different, you know, but you're like, hmm. I mean. Maybe, you know, culturally, there's going to be some stuff, obviously, that's different. But at the end of the day, you know, you have a couple that's getting married and you're there to capture it, the the celebration and and have them relive, you know, one of the best days of their life. So, yeah, yeah totally, totally. And I was going to kind of ask, too. So a lot of times in our Facebook group or, you know, like and I think you I, Nick, he might be our first European guest. Is this correct? I, I believe yeah, okay. so. Well, this is I good. So we so. have a lot of people listening all over the world, and it's so fun for us. But, you know, we know what we know about the United States. That's where 99% of my weddings have ever been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we see in groups a lot just about, like, the difference in what brides are willing to pay for their films. Um, if they're willing to make the investment into the, to the actual film itself. And so... Um, what would you say to people that are out, like our, our European listeners or people in the UK or, um, you know, about charging what you're worth or charging more for your wedding films? Um, the, the economy part is so how much uh, do you, you want to say how much cost in Europe uh, a wedding? Uh, or this is uh, the, the question or? Well, yes, I'm asking kind of, I mean, can you charge, can you charge a lot for wedding films in Europe? Uh I, I think that uh, it's uh, from what I'm, what I'm reading in blogs and plays uh, in Facebook. Uh, I think that uh, everywhere it's uh, it's so America and Europe. It's really really similar about the. I think that in America mm -hmm. uh, the it's um, it's a little bit higher. The um, I I think this is what what I what I I feel with reading uh, some comments or stuff like this. Um, but I don't think that it's so much different between uh, America and Europe uh, with uh, with the prizes. Okay. And so a lot of times I think that, you know, we get stuck in our heads that like we live in a certain spot. You know, there's a lot of places in America even, you know, where, oh, well, I live here so I can't charge more. And so, I mean, I would encourage you if you're listening to this, like no matter where you are, <laughs> Like you can, if you have a product that is good, you can charge the premium for the for the product. The the thing is that uh, um, we we are used to compare our work and our product uh, with uh, the product of someone else uh, who is doing this. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I I think uh, um, I do sometimes in my workshop. I make an example of a restaurant. So if you are opening a kebab, a donor kebab. Uh, you are caring a lot about the price because uh, uh, you want uh, to attract a lot of people and the people, they, they have to choose you faster and because of the price. But when you are doing something artistic, at the end, the, um, the price uh, um, should be your prize and uh, you shouldn't watch so much uh, uh, what the others are doing. Um, I know that it's difficult. I know that it isn't easy. Actually, in that mm. in this moment where a lot of people they are doing uh, uh, almost uh, a really similar work, uh, and uh, that could be uh, a a part where where you you are a little bit afraid with the prize. But when you try to create a product mm. that represent you, then you are you are doing something artistic and. Uh, um, and art, it costs. Um, there's a friend of mine that has a gallery said when you are buying art, it must hurt. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, because you want it. You want that things. But when you are doing a product that is a, a kebab, you, you have to think about, uh, yes, 
that guys it's uh, it's expensive so i've got to go a little bit down if uh, if i'm doing the the same work like uh, like the guy but if you find your your uniqueness your way to to see the things your way to express uh, your vision also on on wedding films i think that the the prize uh, you can you can ask what you want mm -hmm. yeah so, true. so as you're yeah totally totally true so as you're you know you're talking one of the things you were you just mentioned you know your your own uniqueness and you know like that the thing that you have and sharing that with others and stuff and and i know one thing that that you um you, really have is a unique voice in the films that you tell and and you know how the stories that you create and all that kind of stuff so why don't you um maybe talk about um you know you finding your voice as a filmmaker or um as someone that maybe is a little bit newer and they're trying to find their groove and figure out you know how do i create you know this this work you know what are some things that they should think about whenever finding you know that voice and who they are yeah i think that the one of the biggest problem uh, today it's that uh, it's everything uh, really fast visual and uh, um and a lot and a lot so we are used to to watch uh, a lot to watch uh, for example i'm doing wedding films Okay, waiting film. So everything on my social media, on my iPhone, everywhere, it's about waiting films. And you are every mm -hmm. time watching waiting films from other people. And uh, you, you, you want to compete, com uh, compete with, uh, with these people to get something similar, something uh, that has this kind of style or something like this. Um, I, to the, to our workshop, when I done a workshop with, um, with Remy in uh, with Andos Moses that we would do a workshop together with Marvel film. Uh, there was a guy that because I said you've got to find your uniqueness, and th this guy told me, uh, yes, but when you want to learn to play the guitar, you take uh, uh, you take uh, a music, for example, Imagine from John Lennon, and you begin to learn to play Imagine. Huh? Uh, mm. That that is okay. That is okay. But uh, the the problem is that the most of the people they learn so good to play Imagine of John Lennon and they are going on to play every time the music the John Lennon. They they don't try to write their own music. They know how to play, but they are going on to write to to sing the song of John Lennon. And uh, this is the same mm -hmm. things what happen uh, uh, in on wedding films. They learn. Oh, it works. It goes. It, for me, it's easy to do it. I learned everything and I go on to make this stuff and go on, go on, go on every time the same. And we don't try to, because everybody of us, we have our own sensibility, how we watch the stuff, how we watch a film, how we read a book, how we, uh, we hear what kind of music we hear. And at the end, it seems that uh, when you're watching five or 10 wedding films, it seems the same person and it's not possible. It's not possible because mm -hmm. everybody, they have their own voice, they have their own taste, their own taste of music, their own taste of uh, uh, watching the things. I don't know I, if I'm thinking about uh, um, a shooting part where the couple, they are kissing. Uh, there are people that they could be concentrate only on the hands of the couple or only on the on the eyes or really far away. Do you know? The, 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 if you like something and you, you can you put it on on a weight that this is my taste and it's important to to put it up because this is my taste uh, you can begin to to write your own music not write every time the same one that's really good yeah, yeah there's that's really that's really good we i think a lot of us are um so enamored with other people's styles and you know we're like oh i want my film to look like this person or i want my film to look like this person and like you're saying learning to play the car you guitar you need to learn how to play it right but um we're we're so we want to be like these other people that we're just you know 
I, it's like I'm Ricardo 2.0, you know, I, I'm doing you, you know, but just as me and, and your thing is, well, you know, it's okay to learn and be inspired by other people, but you need to find those things that really draw you in so that you can start making things that will separate you and find your unique voice and be um, different than everybody else. So, yeah, I think that that's solid, solid advice. Really, really good. Just finding those things that... Um, you are drawn to and focusing on, you know, those kind of things. I know John has said um, over and over again that, you know, since having children, you know, the like the father daughter first look or father daughter dance, like just really, really gets him. And so that's something. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> he, he cries all the time, which is great. Um, you know, yeah. So, you know, find that thing that. Uh, you're really drawn to because that's also going to make this job more enjoyable, right? Is whenever you are creating the types of things that you want to create um, because you're interested in it. At the yeah. end, we are not cover band that we become famous. No cover band. That's good. It's 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 that's it's, great. It's that's like really this. good. It's, uh, you, it's a uh, it's like you know uh, the people. Uh, we are used to learn stuff and make it like our, that it becomes our. But we, we don't go over. We don't make the, the jump over. There are a thousand workshops out there. We, we are doing workshop, but also in our workshop, we try to make understand, to find your own voice. I, I, I say you, I tell you what, what I'm using at picture profile or uh, what kind of transition I'm doing. But that is, that is, that is. Really, that that is things that don't make your your film become uh, yours. It it makes it become mine. You are doing mine film. <laughs> yes, and right, I, right. I think too that so many of us, like you're saying, start playing the guitar, learn John Lennon, and get comfortable. And yeah, this is comfortable. People like people like hearing me play this song. This is what's safe. Mm -hmm. And so I'm playing this song. I know this like the back of my hand. And this is where most people live for their entire business. Mm. And although it is safe, it's not nearly as fun as when you get out there and you say, hey, this is a new song with a new tempo, a new beat. This is my work. This is my heart mm. in the lyrics. This is my soul out there. And you can really, really tell the difference between somebody who is a cover band mm. and someone who is an actual artist. And so, wow, my head is like, yes, that's... Mm. I'm stealing that and using mm -hmm. it like it's my own from now on. So thank you, Ricardo. For that. <laughs> but um, to somebody that is so in this scenario, to somebody that has learned to play the guitar, you know, they know how to use their camera. They know how to emulate Ricardo. They know how to emulate Nick, whatever. What tips or what would you say to somebody to take action steps? Like what steps would you tell them? to start finding their own voice? What things should they be doing? Should they be looking at movies? Should they be trying different things out on the wedding day? What tips would you give to somebody that wants to find their own voice? I, I know that is a problem because, uh, uh, because as I said before, we are used to when I'm interested in something, when I'm, uh, uh, I, I like something, uh, I'm used to be uh, inside these things and I see only bad stuff. And uh, when, when you want to go out from uh, that comfort zone that uh, you are doing things uh, like someone else, uh, I think that you should stop completely. You learn how to do it. You know how to do it, the things. You know how to use the camera. You know how to shoot. Uh, then now stop one second and begin to make something completely different. And one tip that I give every time is to read. To read, to read, read books, read the stories, read, read stuff. Because with reading, reading you, you, you get the possibility to begin to make work your fantasy, your vision, your way how you are describing uh, uh, a scene that you are reading. Normally, say yeah, but it's everything. Everything is right there. There's every word is describing everything. What, 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 what happened there? Is so magic happened that uh, you are the one that you are drawing. This is what you are, what, what you are reading. And sometimes when you're reading a book, some pages you are reading faster. Some page you are reading two or three times because uh, you, you are, you want to understand it better. You want to be 
more there in the story. So all these things, it trains you to, to, to see a little bit the things in, in your way. And when you are going on a waiting, uh, you, you begin to think about that. What makes me curious about reading that story? How I can describe that story with uh, my vision, with my way to, 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 to see the things? And also hearing music, a lot of music, or watching uh, <coughs> films, how, how, they were, how they were edited, uh, why they were edited like this. Um, these are all things that, that could you make you understand, ah, I like that kind of things, I like that kind of stuff, but out from the wedding, that has nothing to do with weddings, with wedding films from other wedding videographers. Yeah, I love that. And I think that so many of us, like you say, get into this realm where all we are doing is watching other wedding filmmakers and we're seeing what they're doing. And if we're not careful, if that's all we do everyone's work ends up looking exactly the same. And so if you're wanting to stand out in your market, in your industry, you know, like for me, if my films looked like Ricardo's, I would be impo an imposter. I would be, it wouldn't feel n real to me. It wouldn't feel natural to me, but my films, you know, it's like, I, like Nick said, it's like, I'm so, you know, father daughter moments in the bride. I have little girls and I like, I just, play on the emotions so hard and I want moments to breathe and I want, you know, and that's me. And I see people that follow our podcast now that like are messaging me saying, Hey, what camera do you have? What setting was that? What gimbal are you on? What? And they're like, my films just mm -hmm. don't feel like yours. And it's like, well, cause you're not, you're a cover band. You're not, mm. you're not writing your own song. Mm. You need to, you know, emulate what's going you know what you like mm -hmm. and then you have to d elevate it to something that is better than what actually you know you've been watching and so grabbing that inspiration from reading or from you know different shows or movies or you know that kind of thing is what is going to help you see the things that you're really drawn to and i think it's really scary to be drawn like to to put yourself out there because like what if nobody likes it or what if, you know, it bombed, like, but yeah, the that, scariness that, 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 yes, go ahead. That, that is, that is one thing. What, what if nobody like it? The thing is that you have to like it when you love it, when you feel it, that you love it, it's really doesn't matter because when you love it, you believe in it. And when you believe in it, you, you couldn't be the only one to love your stuff. When you love it, when you feel that it's exactly. yours. And uh, really, it doesn't matter if uh, that works, uh, the cover, imagine it was l liked from 1,000 people and your song, it was liked from 10 people. That's all, but these 10 people, they love it. Yeah, they that's... love it. And they, they see you original. They feel, they feel that kind of stuff. And, and when you begin to make something like this, you begin to think like... Uh, an artist, like someone who wants to, mm. because the art uh, is it has nothing to do with beautiful, beautiful and art was, was, it's not the same. Art is the 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 product of the artist. It's the way that the artist feel to describe something, to do something. It's his emotion. He's putting his emotion into his product, and when he product he product uh, art. And uh, when you're doing that, uh, first of all, you feel realized. You feel oh, that you are you are telling something, that that you are sharing a part of you. And uh, when you're doing that, uh, it, it the it's it's a uh, it's a really a fantastic feeling. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday. But you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow, and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor 
to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. How do you deliver your wedding films? Dropbox? Disc? A subscription service that is way too expensive? We have the answer for you. Wedflow. Wedflow is a cloud-based digital delivery system that we love. I personally have been using Wedflow for months and I can't get over how great of a service it is. First off, Wedflow is pay per project. That's right, you only pay for the data that you need. Wedflow uses a premium viewing experience accessible on all modern devices and playback up to 4K. With custom branding and theming, wedding filmmakers can deliver an experience that's truly on brand from start to finish. Head to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow and upload your first project for as little as $1 per gigabyte. Wedflow, a whole new take on wedding film delivery. So my um, wife what is, was a graphic design major in school and one of the things that she learned was that um, because it looks cool isn't a good answer. Right. Like we we want to make this. And she was like, whenever I was I used to be a youth minister and I would, you know, design stuff. And she'd ask me questions like, why did you do that? And I was like, because it looks cool. And she was like, no, no, like that. That's not a good enough answer. Like you need to have a reason right. behind what you're doing. And I think that 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 is a big step into finding your mm-hmm. voice is because you're going to go from, oh, I'm I'm doing this shot like Ricardo did because it looks cool. But I guarantee you, if we ask you, hey, why did you do this drone shot in this way and then flow into this thing and have this music, like the ambient, why did you do that? I bet you would have a better reason than because it looks cool, right? Because it's yours and you believe in it and you want to sell it and all of that stuff. So if if we can all shift from looking cool to I am doing this for a reason, then that is a great step for you to find your voice so that you can tell these stories Absolutely. through your films. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot there because we are we are really attracted. Now today, the, the, the beauty is uh, it sells really good. It sells really, really good, the, the beauty, and uh, uh, everything is working uh, uh, with the beauty. Um, Instagram, it's about beauty. Well, if you have a cool pictures, it works good. If you have uh, um, a picture where it could be interesting, but maybe or emotional, and maybe it's uh, it doesn't look so good, this picture nobody calculated. And with that kind of feelings, we are also doing our stuff. We are doing. Uh, and it's wrong. The thing is, it's wrong. <laughs> to, to make the thing only beautiful, it's wrong. <laughs> I am falling down in the same yeah. things. I, I'm doing the same things. I'm trying every time to make the things beautiful. But it's, uh, sometimes I say myself that it's, it's wrong to think like this. Yeah, I think so many of us just get so focused on like what Nick is saying, just like, Oh, it's cool. So I'm doing it instead of there being purpose and intentionality. And if you're out there listening and you're like, man, I don't know even what my voice is. I would encourage you. You can still keep playing cover songs. You can still keep trying things out. Sorry. Um, But like you have to be taking steps to find your voice. And if you're not doing that, like I'm still on that journey. There are a lot of things that I do where it's like, well, I like that because Nick does that or because, you know, whomever does, you know, it's like, oh, I want to steal that idea. But like you take all these bits and pieces over time and you can look back at films. And if you're not looking back at your films from a year or two ago and saying, oh, I wish I would have known what I know now, mm-hmm. you know, you, you they should make you cringe just a little bit whenever you're watching them because you should be evolving as an artist. Yeah, Nick. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was going to say, you said that, you know, going back and looking at your stuff from a year ago, like we all love to look at our work and kind of make ourselves feel bad because we compare ourselves to people that have been doing this longer or just more technical or whatever. But the only one that you should really be comparing yourself to is yourself. And looking looking at the stuff that you did a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and then saying, oh, I have improved so much. And, oh, I used to do, you know, I used to have slider mm-hmm. shots and, you know, 
know, every other movement. And now, you know, I'm barely using them, you know, just seeing yourself and how you've grown. That's, that's definitely where mm-hmm. you need to, to stick around it and oh, look yes. at that. So, yeah. Um, we're, we, we, um, did put in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook mm-hmm. group. If you want to join that, all you need to do is facebook.howtofilmweddings.com. We put a question up and we said, does anyone have any questions for Ricardo? And, um, I may or may not have spelled his name wrong. So he's, he's forgiven me. I think a little bit, we're mm-hmm. still talking, we're on speaking <laughs> terms. So, um, we're, we're, we're going to jump into our, uh, our question of the day presented by Weditor. Weditor more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And Elaine Jimenez asked this question. I would love to know how you begin an edit. What are your first thoughts when you look at an empty timeline? Okay. Uh, there's not a rule. There's not a way that, uh, that I, I say I'm doing every time like this because that's not true. Um, sometimes I, uh, I I take a um, I take a a part of the wedding that I, I was really inspired and uh, I want to make that part uh, really really pop up so that it comes out. The example is uh, one wedding that I shot this year that it was a, a wedding in Tuscany um, with uh, um, Alisa and a- Alex. And uh, th- I liked the two parts of that wedding. That was the, the bride singing on on the uh, in the ceremony, and uh, the vows uh, that they change, and the way how he spoke. Uh, it was really touching. So these two parts uh, were the first things what I put on the timeline. I put them in the timeline, and I said I have to find the way to make these two moments really important i want that they come out in somehow and uh, and like this uh, i i begin to build i i try to f- sometimes it comes out uh, a nice beginning that uh, it makes the the things more interesting and i'm going to that point uh, with building interesting um but uh, it's mostly of the time i have to say that is like this sometimes uh, i I saw a film, I watch a film, um, I don't know, for example, comes out, I did the, 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 the um, I remember that uh, Gravity, do you know Gravity, the film? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, the beginning of the film, it was uh, uh, like, uh, there was this rising sound, uh, really going up, uh, and then the silence and you see the world you know in the space and that kind of silence oh, yeah. that kind ca- that kind of silence it was so loud <laughs> that silence that but mm-hmm. i say wow i want to have that kind of feeling in one of a teaser when i'm doing a teaser or something like this i wanted to get that kind of feeling and i've done teaser for for a wedding in santorini where there was a rising and then the silence uh, and the drone in the morning and that, that was really nice so it's every time depend on what how how i i begin to to edit the film it's uh, it's depend about the content that i shot that they depend about the some inspiration what i got from from a film or or a music or something like this so it's like this yeah yeah that's really yeah good. i i like yeah, I was going to say that you're, I think you're doing it like a, um, you're coming at it from more of an artistic standpoint, obviously, where you're like, how was I moved on the day? What did the couple do? You know, you're trying to create something that really stuck out to you, but also is, you know, important to them that the film that you were talking about, I was just watching it before we got on. And I, one thing I really liked about it is, you know, you're opening with drone shots and you're opening with, you know, cityscape and stuff. And you can kind of hear this like yeah. echoey kind Far of away. music in the background. And mm. yeah, like, like it was happening something was happening but it was you know just far away and then it cuts from you know the street to 
them, you know, her singing. And, 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 and you're like, that that was a cool way to make that moment really important by you could hear it, but you kind of mm-hmm. couldn't hear it, you know, and then cut right to it. So mm-hmm. anyway, just, just using moments from your day, how are you inspired? How, how did what happened in the day? How can that, you know, forge your film? And, and, and in that film, film there's the, the video cassette uh, effect, you know, the VHS yeah, effect. Yeah. And that, there's a story also about that VHS because it was raining uh, the, before the ceremony. So they went down, uh, they prepare to the ceremony and it begins to rain really, really, really strong. And uh, they came back. I was uh, uh, watching where, where are all my stuff under the rain, so all my cameras, the audio, everything. And um, I, I shoot nothing. And it was really beautiful because everybody was running away from the rain. Um, and after they met uh, and uh, uh, they were discussing, okay, guys, the sun, uh, the, 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 the raining, it's almost finished. Uh, are we ready to, to try it again? And uh, I wanted to have that part in the film, uh, but I filmed it really, really bad. I filmed it uh, so it, I didn't have a lot of material. I wanted to ask the couple if they have some some iPhone cameras, some iPhone uh, things, uh, and I wanted to mix it uh, uh, with uh, this kind of effect uh, that it was the video cassette because I didn't f- film it good. Uh, but after I hold it because it looked cool, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that film that film was really really good. And I I think that a lot of us, you know, you 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 are only thinking about what I shot that was perfect instead of what I shot that meant something. And I think that a lot of times as filmmakers, we will delete a clip or a portion of the day because we didn't the audio wasn't as clear as we really wanted it to be or but like you know, you said certain moments of that day were very touching to you. And I think that's a really good word to use there is like what touched you as the filmmaker mm-hmm. on the wedding day about the couple or about a cat that was walking by, you know, that was just like a garden cat or whatever. It's like what stood out to you? What touched you about the way that the groom just held the bride all day long or the way the groom was close with his mother or, you know, there's so, so many different things. And that's why this is such a beautiful art form that we get to tell, you know, these stories is because every one of them is so different and whether or not the couple is really, you know, outgoing, you know, there's always something that if you're looking that is really beautiful, that is happening. And so I think it's really neat to watch your films. I'm always inspired just by how you bring out these, this beauty and these little moments that most people just, fly right by yeah i think that a, a lot uh, i see also when we are doing workshops and something like this the people they are concentrating a lot uh, about the camera and to bring it home cool stuff that is uh, the main goal they want to bring cool shot mm-hmm. cool things but they forget completely the empathy that they have that they could build between them and the people what they are shooting. Because when you are getting that Mm -hmm. empathy, that you feel the the people that you are shooting, then you can get more closer and get the the stuff and feel what they are feeling. Like this, you, you, you can understand why they are crying, what makes the things emotional, what what at the beginning when i was at the wedding i i it, it really when we begin to shoot i, I was asked myself why the people they are crying i thought they, they he saw his wife uh, one hour ago why he's crying but he's coming but you know but when you're getting to know the people you you try to understand the meaning from them when the bride is coming but when, when you're you're getting this kind this kind of empathy to to understand what 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 is important to to shoot? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Really so that's really good. We, you know, I, I remember this film that I did last summer. And while the bride was reading her letter and she was getting like really emotional and, you know, it was a really powerful moment. And I remember a bridesmaid walked in, saw what we were doing and walked out and the door slammed really loud. And um, while that happened, that that was like at the height of the emotion of the bride. And it was really good, except for this loud, you know, thud in the background. 
And um, I was talking to my wife and she was like, you have to put that in their film. Like, that, like you have to. And I was like, well, what about? And she was like, that doesn't matter. Like, yes, it's annoying. And from an artist, like, I get it. But the power of that moment is more important than the perfectness of that moment. And, um, I, I think that we, we are so, we set our eyes so much on being perfect and we, and we should do everything in our power, right. To capture everything is, is, you know, as nice as we can and as professional, but sometimes there's stuff out of our control, but still those moments are really powerful and they matter, especially to the people that we're creating it for. And I'm sure that she would much rather have that moment with the door slamming than not have it at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to jump in. We have another question from our Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, switching gears just a little bit. Peter Aponte, he asks, what were your biggest struggles while starting in the business and how did you overcome them? So when you were getting going, what were some of the biggest struggles that you had to overcome? Uh, the biggest struggle, um, the biggest struggle, it was to, to find in um, uh, equilibrium. Uh, because uh, um, when we begin, we, it's something that we are still struggling now. Um, because mm -hmm. uh, when we begin, uh, still now, uh, our um, adventure with uh, uh, shooting uh, weddings. Uh, so my wife uh, is the photographer, and I'm the videographer. And uh, so um, we we begin together, and we love it. We love it so much. We say, "Wow, how." try to think if it could be our work this it's so beautiful <laughs> and uh, and we took everything everything what came like uh, we didn't know what was the limit mm. uh, till now we don't know what is the limit so we, we we know a little bit better but the thing is that that kind of of things it makes the uh, everything too much and when it's too much uh, it's like uh, that you're, you're going to um, to not giving any more that value that you gave at the beginning, and uh, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is uh, it also stealing uh, uh, time to your private life uh, and everything. It's something that we are still uh, struggling, and we want to uh, to to become better in that part and. Uh, um, and this is was something that uh, put us in in places where oh god so before we loved it so much and now almost we hate it it was that it was 2014 mm -hmm. we took so many weddings that it was uh, no no life anymore it was only only right. shooting 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 uh, and uh, we were almost uh, saying oh we we have to change work because it's too much so this is this is something that uh, uh, the 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 money the money it's it's something that to take in consideration but uh, it's 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 not something that uh, to get more more money it's something that makes you feel better you you've, you've got to find a way to to an equilibrium where where you can uh, that, that that is that was the thing where we were struggling and uh, we trying yeah. to make every year a little bit better. Mm. Oh, I, I think that a lot of people that resonates with a lot of people is, you know, getting getting started and taking work and then having too much work. And then you kind of hate this thing mm. that you love, you know, and, and all that. So, um, yeah, that's that's definitely something. Yeah, that, because know, after I, I still continue to, yeah, to after with. after yeah. you're not doing good. Also, you are not doing any more good, because if, if you put that kind of stress, uh, it's uh, it suffer your 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 product what you are doing we know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film music bed has spent years collaborating with artists bands and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video with amazing artists like chapters tony anderson and the light the heat music bed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. 
When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. Okay, so now we're gonna shift the the conversation a, a little bit into you know you know where people can find you you know if they if they don't you know follow your work or any of that stuff. So why don't you um, you know share you know where they can follow you and then if there's anything else that you want to plug or promote you know you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, so they can find us on, on our website or Instagram that is Creative Wedding with the K. Uh, so it's uh, me, and my wife, uh, Marco, that is uh, another shooter, another videographer in uh, Creative Waiting, and Valerie, she's the other photographer. So we are a team now. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on uh, yeah, the, the all, all that place. What we are doing, it's, uh, we are doing also uh, workshops. Um, uh, all the the workshop what we are doing here as creative waiting the most they are in German. Um, I'm doing uh, uh, also video workshop with uh, Maru Film with uh, Remy uh, and Puyuk. Uh, that is the Osmosis workshop uh, that is in English and uh, it's one per year. Um, I'm doing lots. Yes, we are doing lots. Um, but yeah, that is. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say Lutz is cool as Ricardo just said Lutz. <laughs> <laughs> Lutz, uh, I, I wish I could do it that cool. How, how, how <laughs> Speaking of cool, so, I mean, your accent, I could I could really, I mean, Nick, maybe we should go into a segment where we just have him say things so we have his voice saying them better than us, and then we can overdub. Like, he could say, welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. Or and like, then you could just mouth yeah, it. So, <laughs> no, no, and so I will say too, your LUTs, your colors, oh my goodness. You know, we might want to talk about that for just a second. Um, your colors are beautiful. And like um, the way you shoot, um, you know, we've talked a little bit on the podcast recently about colors, but maybe tell us the style that you went with for your LUTs. Like what, how would you describe your LUTs? Um, to somebody that's listening that might be interested in grabbing those. Yeah, it's it's every time I evolving every year. So we are um, we are trying uh, something new, something a little bit different. Uh, it's me and my wife uh, Anna that we are trying uh, because we try to have a product uh, that photo and film uh, they are matching together. So it it should be uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah some a product that you feel that it comes from the same house. Uh, um what what we try it's it's a kind of look uh, that in this moment we find uh, cinematic uh, but it's every time it's uh, in this moment in this moment i i see stuff that i've done two years ago that i would like to take it and regrade it and uh, uh i know that next year we will try something different so um it, it's every time uh, fine tunings on on different kind of parameters uh, and we try to to get a look that that we feel uh we feel good with that so like this i think that's great and um we'll link all those you know in the show notes below for people mm. to check those out and stuff but they're beautiful it's crazy to watch you know i know that your instagram is huge I, last i checked there were like almost eighty thousand followers of your instagram mm. account yeah. and then um, you're just making big waves, you know, all across Europe and making, you know, we're big fans over here. You know, I was talking to Matt Johnson, who's a friend of ours um, with a large beard. And he said <laughs> he had Love a couple <laughs> he had a couple questions that I wanted to do the Matt Johnson questions of the day. Um, his first question uh, for you, he he wanted to know your where you find all of your good hats <laughs> and if, if he could get a little insight onto where to find some of the, the really cool hats that you wear. So take it away. Where, where can we grab a Ricardo Fasoli approved hat? <laughs> that sounds very really interesting question. In Amazon, I took it for, for $30, oh, 30, $30 dollars. I don't know. Uh. No, man, he was, he's funny. He he also said that you were the Italian stallion. <laughs> uh, and then uh, he said, uh, what else did he say? He said he wanted to know about your hat choices. And then he said, have him record a new intro for how to film wed weddings using his sexy accent. So we have to, we have to get that. No, he's a good friend of ours. And he says, hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like him so much. He is amazing on his YouTube channel. Uh, I really like him. <laughs> He's a, a really yeah, cool definitely. dude. I, I will tell definitely. him that you said definitely. good things about him. But man, well, our, our time is kind of running to an end here. For those of you that are listening, definitely check out Ricardo and his work for all that they're doing. Finding your voice is such a big deal. You know, re-listen mm-hmm. to this episode. Really think about what draws you into films that you're watching. Be taking notes of things that you're reading or seeing or things that impact you when finding your voice. So, Ricardo, thank you so much for taking the time today to be on the show. I know the listeners are going to be super pumped after they listen to this episode. Oh, thank you so much for you guys. It was it was really fun <laughs> with you. Okay, Ricardo, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. We really appreciate you taking the time. You out there listening, we want you to head over to howtofilmweddings.com. We've got lots of digital stuff out there for you to purchase. One of those things that we have on sale right now is our email templates. So we have 40 email templates that will really help you streamline your... They will help you streamline your business so that you can communicate very well with your clients. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Leave us a review on your favorite podcatcher. And until next time, we will see ya. See ya.